What's up, y'all? Welcome to the inside look. Got another surprise guest from y'all. Some of y'all might know him as Antonio. Some of y'all might know him as AK, the lyrical king. Give it up for AK, your boy AK. Yeah. What's up, man? What, what you up, been up to? Been pretty good, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. You been doing this music? Still been doing this music thing, man? Yeah, uh, yeah. Been working my ass off on this music, man. I got three projects I'm working on right yeah, now. Yeah, for Speaking of them projects, before we get to what I'm talking about, I gotta ask you ten questions. But is there anything you want to say before I start asking you these surprise ten questions? Well, I mean, my mixtape is out. If you ain't heard it already, go listen to it. Hot mixtape, hottest mixtape I ever heard. And also go check out Welcome to the Movement. Oh yeah, they were sleeping on that, but y'all need to wake up, drink the coffee or whatever. But you ready for the ten questions, man? Yeah, yeah. I don't think the world ready for this, but fuck it anyway. But yeah. All right, man, the first question I was going to ask you, man, what made you want to do a mixtape with so many songs? I mean, how many was on there? Like, 32? Like, god damn. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the start of it, like, when I first got the idea, I was with uh, Sean Malcolm. Uh -huh. And uh, I had actually finished the mixtape at his house, but lost the CD because I let man. somebody borrow it. So... That shit was gone. So I Damn. literally had to start from scratch. Had to mm. get brand new beats and everything. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do something new with this. Mm. Started with that. And then some other stuff happened. And I just it just kept getting prolonged and prolonged. So I was like, okay, this is Yeah, so that was the hold up. Because there was a lot of people asking, what took it so long? Like, didn't it take about four years or something? Or how long did it take? Actually, it? let's see. Yeah. I started it when I was... 17 and I'm 24 Ooh, now and it's just not coming out so 17 man. Ooh, that's a, yeah that's a lot of yeah, years man that's that's a lot of years but it was worth the mixtape. years it, it's worth the years of wait though for yeah. real y'all y'all need to check that out man yeah. now another another question man what is your next approach with music like my next approach is I'm I'm going at it full force like yeah I'm, I'm going at it like never before because I was mm -hmm. I was in the slump for a while, mm -hmm. like where I just wanted to give up. Like a lot of people don't know that, but man, now I I feel like I got my second win and I'm I'm just ready to kill it. That's good, man. I think it's a lot of people that don't want you to give up. I mean, you got people from New York that's feeling your music and everything, yeah, yeah. man. You can't give up on your people and everything. Yeah, no. But yeah, man. But another man. Who is the artist that you want to collide with that you ain't collided with yet? What is the artist that you would like to collide with that you ain't never collided with yet? You mean is like any? Like locally or? Like it don't matter. Locally, unfamous or famous. Well, like I mean. You, at first, unfamous un and then famous. Unfamous, the person I wanted to most collaborate mm -hmm. with was, believe it or not, was Michi. Uh-huh. But all that yeah. stuff happened and... Yeah. You know, it's whatever, man. If he still want to do a song, I'd do a song with yeah, him. Yeah, I feel you on that. I oh, mean, yeah. I I was just trying to you know just squash everything. But yeah, hate to see some, stuff some niggas just drain like that. They don't let the raw with. Yeah, yeah. But far as famous, mm -hmm. hands down, I gotta say CeeLo, man. Yeah, like, give I, it out. I, that's my dream. If I could, I do a song with that nigga. I'd die happy, man. <laughs> For real. But yeah, but yeah, that's, that's, that's it on that one. Yeah, that's yeah. It I thought you were about to say more one bad, but. Oh, and Eminem, too, and Hobson. And Hobson. Yeah, Hobson. yeah shout yeah. out to Hobson, man. Shout out to the whole thing you starting. But, yeah, that you started. You doing your thing, man. Big shots out to you. But, man, the fifth question I was going to ask you, man, who was your favorite rapper that's not famous? Who was your favorite rapper that's not famous? My favorite non-famous yeah. rapper? Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's really I not... I mean, I don't, I don't want to say that to be a dick, but it's not really that many good ones out there. Yeah. Like, because everybody is doing the same kind of music. But, like, as far as originality mm -hmm. and style, like, and how they come at the mic lyrically, like, mm -hmm. even though sometimes it'll take me a second to understand it, mm -hmm. I would say it would be between... I say between Bullet Fresh and Typhoon would be the, be the top oh, two. <laughs> Let it be the I know y'all, yeah, that's why I'm smelling yeah. because I am, you know I am a well, typhoon, yeah. but, <laughs> but yeah, man, appreciate that. I know you a straight, honest man. You're not yeah. saying it just because you're sitting beside me, 
But you know, honestly, you know, you're my favorite rapper. So, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in front of you. Like, you feel uh, what yeah. I'm saying? But yeah, man, you, you done with that question? Yeah. I can move on. All right. The next, <laughs> the next question is, what improvement? Is there any improvements you think you need to make to make yourself any better? Or you feel like you're at the top of your game. You just need to uh, keep going. Lyrically, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, nobody's perfect lyrically. I yeah. feel like. If you get to a point where you can't progress, can't progress lyrically, then you don't need to do it anymore. Yeah. You should always strive to get better lyrically. But I mean, I'm I'm always critique myself, like mm-hmm. far as that. But my 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 most thing that I've been trying to work on is like you know getting back in shape so I can get my yeah. stage presence right and you move know around yeah move stuff. around a little more on stage. Stage presence is a that's yeah. a very important key to all of the people that's just now starting yeah. music. Because I mean I have yeah. the enthusiasm. I mean that's yeah. not oh, a question, yeah. but we, we that's just know. uh you know. Yeah. Sometimes you get a little winded being a big guy like you. Yeah. But um what's the best song you think you made on this on your mixtape? What is your favorite song? Your best track you think you Ooh. put good thoughts in, ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, no criticism you can hmm. do whatsoever. Like the entire mixtape, yeah, like even the bonus, type. yeah, even the bonus, everything. Yeah. What's your favorite track on there? Hey, hit me over the head with that question. Huh? <laughs> uh, they get harder. <laughs> I have to say between. I mean, coming from my younger years, I say the best song from that age was Boss Nigga. Like, Boss hands Nigga. down, I, that song was put together perfectly, recorded perfectly, the lyrics mm-hmm. was perfect. Everything came out. Oh perfect. yeah. And far as like song I did now to put on there, I would say between Do or Die and uh Destiny would be the top two. Oh yeah, I'm Without. feeling that one. And another question, man. If you walked up to a rapper right now that's trying to take the same approach that you're taking and trying to be on that lyrical level that you is, but they just now starting, what would be your advice to get to them? If they, like, you know, just beginning and want to be on the lyrical level, they shoot towards that. Like, what would you say to them? My advice would be, uh, number one, stay original. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you look at so many eras of music Mm -hmm. and how... Busta Rhymes or Eminem or somebody like that have stood the test of time mm-hmm. lyrically and like decade after decade they still mm-hmm. delivering. But came different at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but that's that's because yeah. they they got that originality, they got that style about them. Yeah. They not doing what everybody else doing. And even if they did do what everybody else was doing, they take it up a notch even then. Yeah, just you, yeah, you're saying like just be what you just be you. Yeah, just, just be just what be you yourself. Got on your mind. Just be yeah. yourself. Whatever you, yeah. In in this music business, man, you you try to be like everybody else, you just gonna fade away because, like for example, with crunk music, before this whole turn up bullshit came along, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Lil John and the East Side Boys came with the crunk music, mm-hmm. and then they faded out, and now it's the same thing yeah, with the turn up music, and then you look at like people like LL Cool J, like he been rapping since. Mm-hmm. My dad was in school, Ooh. so like to see him still stand the test of time lyrically, like that that lets you know where your flow is. Oh yeah, he can still come back after yeah. all the albums he did. About twelve yeah. or thirteen. And like like another example would be like like Eminem, how he took so much time off mm-hmm. and you know, like look like lyrical music was just dying slowly mm-hmm. and then he just Hit the music game over the head with that album. Oh yeah, and took it over album. within a snap, just like that. And that's because he know how to how to produce. He very punctual with what he does, and every artist should be like that. So, and another question I gotta ask you is what what runs through your mind every time you hear instrumental when you write a song? What what is the main thing that runs through your mind to keep you going? To, to kill it like you do, to be on the level that you be. What keeps you focused on that? The first thought in my mind is family. Mm-hmm. Because I look at how my success will affect their lives mm-hmm. and like wanting to give them something better in the world, you know, rather than just having to live 
not that I had a bad life at all, but you know what I'm saying, like not having to live in poverty. Mm-hmm. And my second thought is just like I I want to say I say transforming my pain because sometimes I can take negative energy and turn it into something good. Mm-hmm. Like I could turn it into a positive song, but at the same time I can take that negative energy and then force it on another beat to where it's like you know you lyrically you don't want to fuck with me. Yeah. I heard a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> but if you you done with that, ain't you? Yeah. Okay, so if you um if you made it today and you know all the bullshit people see people think when you make it you know, they think that's just, woo, you live a life and stuff, but they don't realize when you make it to rap, you gotta, you treat it like a real job. You gotta really yeah. be dedicated. So my question to you is, if you made it, would you really be dedicated to this 24-7 every day? Like you, like a real artist supposed to, just to get to where any other artist, um, you know, got to. I, I could definitely say yeah to that, but at the same time, I couldn't say, I, I'd give it... 110% mm-hmm. like you know I give it my all I put music together you know whenever they needed me to I'd be there be at the interviews freestyling on radio shows you know talk shows all that stuff I'm you know what I'm saying I'm yeah my mind is prepared for that and my mind I'm also getting my mind prepared because then it goes back to family like I have to prepare my mind for okay I know I'm not gonna see them on this time yeah. so I gotta prepare you know, ahead of time, like, everything's going to be scheduled. So it's, it's going to be harder, but I feel like with all the love we have as family, we'll make it regardless. So. Okay. So who was, your, who was your best collide you ever had with so far? Out of all the people you collided with, who was your favorite artist to collide with? Oh, like, you could man. call any time and just be like, come on, man, I need to do a track with you. Oh, man. Uh, I... The most dependable, and I'm not I'm not just saying it because you sit right here. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the most dependable feature I have is probably you. But like, as far as like a nigga that I know is just gonna you know blow it out of the mm-hmm. water, I have to say I have to say Bullet Fresh on that one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> big yeah. shout out to him, man. For real, yeah, I, have to say I heard a lot of one. tracks with him. He just. Yeah, he, he really came through on the mixtape. Yeah, like, it, was, it was a couple songs where, you know, we had some miscommunications, which that's still being worked out. So mm-hmm. that's why that's why the bonus disc is taking so long mm-hmm. to get here, because that's still getting worked out. So, but yeah, we got more songs on the way. Like me and him even got you know bouncing mm-hmm. ideas off each other about you know talks of a group collision mixtape. So mm-hmm. who knows? What could be next with that? And you know, I got people, I had people ask me, like, you know, what my downfalls and how I'm recovering. I had people asking me, but they really don't know. Like, when you hit your downfall, like, how did you come out of that and come back? Like, you, because you came back on top so quick, it's like you never fell down. Like, what made you, how did you recover from that and get back on top so quick and just, you know, just brush it off your shoulders and just... Come back strong when you're back against the wall. What motivation? What, what motivation do you get to keep you going with that? Uh, I have to say, I have to say three things. That mm-hmm. number one would be just like the anger I had when then, mm-hmm. like just built up over everything, like so many situations in life going on, mm-hmm. and. You know, I have to say number two is a tie between Jenny because, yeah, she's just a, a phenomenal woman. Like, it's just, Big just shout out to she me. just, it's just like stuff she says to me that, that keep me going. And then like, just thinking about Kaya or, you know, just mm-hmm. seeing her, that gives me the drive to keep going. But, I mean... Also, the haters, you gotta give a shout out mm-hmm. to them. Because shout out to all the haters. Without, without them, uh, you don't have a drive. You ain't, yeah. you ain't gonna want to do it if you can't prove nobody wrong. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I have to say those are the main reasons. And then, you know, the talks we have a lot, 
Whether they whether they normal conversations or heated arguments. Heated arguments. <laughs> we always, a lot of arguments. Yeah. I'm laughing we now always, when we argue and it ain't no laughs in it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> always getting hung up. Oh, on yeah. Something. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Or it might be me to the head or something. Just being real <laughs> with y'all. Yeah, but that's about it, though. Yeah. But yeah, man, I thank y'all for, I like to thank y'all for seeing this, whoever viewed it or whatever, man. Thank y'all for coming to the Inside Look. And I want to thank you for coming and doing the interview. No problem. Or yeah, appreciate it, man. But hope you keep on doing music for the rest of your life, Hell man. Yeah, yeah. Take you down. <laughs> but thank y'all for checking it the out. The day man. I quit music will be the day Sway stopped wearing beanies. Damn. <laughs> but I guess that's it, y'all, for the inside look, man. We got plenty more coming, man. But all right, peace out, y'all. Yeah. TMOE TV. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs>